So the wheelbase is 52 inches. It does claim a top speed of 80 miles an hour. And the power provides 8 kilowatts, 11 horsepower nominal, and 14.5 kilowatts peak. The motor in the rear is a PMAC hub motor. You'll notice that it does not have a drive chain. And the battery is a 4,000 watt hour battery. Now this bike is sitting on tires that are CST CM NK01 tires. Let's go to the battery. The battery is a removal battery. It's a lithium ion technology and you can charge it to 100% without any type of memory issues. The whole bike is cast aluminum frame and the bike weighs about 300 pounds. The front brake is a hand operated two piston floating rotor hydraulic brake and it has a 15 degree incline climbing capability. There's also a rear brake that has a disc. Alright, so we are now going to go to the freeway and we'll see what this bike can do. Let's test it out. Here we go. Full throttle. Yeah. So about 10 seconds to get to 60 miles an hour. The throttle. Uh, this is in regular drive mode. There is definitely a lot of wind resistance. So maybe getting a front uh, windshield would be awesome. Again, I like that the letting go of the throttle is going to activate either regen braking or start the braking process. So I'm getting used to that. Although, you know, some people that don't drive electric cars may not be used to that. So that is one one thing to be aware of. All right, here we go. We're at 55 now. Now some people have changed their mirrors out to a rectangular one similar to the concept. Um, I find these mirrors okay, they're not too bad. They're angled, so I like to think that they're aerodynamic. Um, okay, here we go, red light. We're gonna have to brake. All right, test the braking. Really good braking. That braking is really good. Solid braking. No issues with the braking. Okay. So again, about 10 seconds to get to 60, or 8 seconds to get to 50. So we're about to jump on the freeway here. Let's see the sports mode speed. Traffic is unobstructed, so we'll be able to get this thing to hopefully 80 miles an hour. See how it performs. Here we go. There you go guys, we got it up to sports mode, we got it up to 82 miles an hour and it sustained for roughly in my head about 2-3 to three minutes but the drop came all of a sudden so that's something that should be fixed. You don't want to have it drop on you without warning and you're in the leftmost lane because you will not be able to get out of the lane if the traffic is going 70. It, drops down, it dropped down to me for, to 65 so just keep that in mind. Okay, and I still have about half battery life now. So still okay. Now one of the other complaints I see a lot of people is this, this engine kill button. It doesn't really do anything except lock the throttle. So it, easily they could have put a cruise control or something, something different, you know? Like maybe put some auxiliary lighting uh, features or maybe turn an external plug on or off. So it doesn't make sense. You could actually hit this and then I don't know what would happen. but. It wouldn't be good. Overall, for the price point of what I got it for, it's not too bad. Um, if it was seven to eight thousand dollars, I would say no, just because 
you know, it's basically a uh, Frankenstein uh, motorcycle uh, from China, you know, that so some of the things that, you know, I would be looking for is features like ABS and, um, you know, something more aerodynamic. Even the pegs are a little bit low for a bike that has a low uh, center of gravity due to the heavy pack of the battery right in the center. So uh, I don't have any passenger pegs. You can see that my, my feet are roughly about, I don't know, they're they got two more inches uh, so they don't you know the pegs are unnecessarily long I guess but you know they want to appeal to multiple riders I suppose so I understand where they're coming from all right guys I just got back from the ride um, so I give this bike a 6 out of 10 and I'll tell you why the sustained speed of 80 miles an hour is very dangerous because after two to three minutes it'll throttle downwards so if you are in the left side lane or the second to left side lane it could be a pretty dangerous situation because the bike doesn't give you that warning and that's definitely something that should be considered so that's why i'm subtracting two points for that now in terms of the fit and finish you can see right here that the charger doesn't quite fit my phone i am not able to plug in the usb uh, because it just doesn't fit the wireless is on and off, so functionality wise, it's great that there's a charging compartment here, but I would rather have a little bit more space, especially given that there's this useless void on the bottom here that doesn't really serve a purpose. This, this could be used to make a nice little uh, cubby or something, or maybe put in uh, the ports through there. So uh, fit and finish, you can see right here that my, my phone top is loose. It's not, I don't know if it's supposed to be loose or not. The spray mechanism here maybe it's just broken i don't know but it's not always the best quality okay steel uh, aluminum like the quality of the material is really solid um can't complain the seat is a little bit hard this is unnecessary to have the seat come upwards here but you know it's not padded at all i could use about another inch of padding this can easily be replaced because the seat uh, happens to have a screw underneath so it's modular so overall, I'm going to give this bike a 6 out of 10. It's an entry-level bike. You cannot beat the price of $5,700. Um, at the $7,000, $8,000 range, there's better bikes out there. And I'll put a link in the description below of some of the bikes. Okay, It doesn't have the promised features. It can't sustain 80 miles an hour. And it doesn't have ABS. That's my review. Hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you in the future.